Hey, Rob Dirks here. Um, I'm recording the audiobook right now from my novel, Where the Hell is Tesla? And while I was recording it, I thought it might be helpful to show you if you are an independent author or you're working with a small publisher, you actually can record and narrate your own audiobook. Uh, it's not the quickest process, um, and you do need a little bit of prep and a little bit of equipment, uh, but it's not as daunting as you might think. So I wanted to walk you through the process. Okay, before we get started, I did make a couple of assumptions here. Uh, the assumptions are one, that you have a book, it's already written, and it's already published, whether it's through Amazon or Smashwords or somewhere. Okay, so if you haven't done that, go ahead and publish your book and uh, come back to this video. I'll be here later. Uh, you should also have access to a computer. Uh, you can use an iPad, but the files, if you're narrating and recording a book, can be hours long, so I'm not sure an iPad will have the capacity for that, although you can use it. Um, I'm using a certain gear here that you're going to notice. You will need some gear, uh, but you won't need anything crazy. Some of this stuff might look crazy, and, and you don't have to worry about that. Um, and then the last thing is that this is meant to be an overview to, give, to make you feel comfortable with the idea of recording your own audiobook. It's not a step-by-step -step tutorial. Although at any point, if you're going through this and you have a question, absolutely go to my contact page on goldfinchpublishing.com or robdirks.com and shoot me an email and I'll answer any questions that you have. Not that I'm the expert, but I have gone through this process uh, and it's fun. Okay, now I'm gonna take you through the steps. Step one, create an account with ACX. So here's my sell page on Amazon uh, and I noticed there is no audiobook there. And I ask myself, is this something I can do? And I find out that yes, I can. But first, let me show you a, this is the Martian, an audiobook on Amazon. It's got 8,000 reviews there. Um, and I'm gonna play you a little bit of sample of this. Thousands of humanity, blah, blah, blah. The Ares One crew did their thing and came back heroes. They got the parades and fame and love of the world. Okay, so uh, Andy Weir's got this Audible audio edition for sale. This is how you can do it if you're on Amazon. First, you will create an account with ACX. Okay, it's pretty straightforward. This is not a tutorial exactly, so I'm not going to go into every step. But uh, ACX is part of Audible, which is an Amazon.com subsidiary. They build and they manage the audio content that gets sold on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes. When you start your account, all you'll need is uh, bank information uh, so that you can get paid, right? And then you need to add your title. All right, so it welcomes you, and then it'll list books that it finds by your name. And in this case, uh, I've already done it for Where the Hell is Tesla, a novel. Okay, so here's my project for Where the Hell is Tesla. Put in my information, and then I'm ready to upload my audio. Okay, let's go over to GarageBand and get recording. Okay, now that you've set up your ACX account, uh, we want to make sure that you have your studio ready. And I use the term studio loosely. It can be any space, any space where you can put your computer and a microphone. But there are some things that you will need in there. Um, the first thing you need in your space, obviously, is a computer. Uh, I use a Mac. We have an ad agency that we've been running for a long time. And if you know ad agencies or creatives, uh, it's all Mac shops. So everything we have is Mac. And uh, the benefit of having a Mac is that the recording software, at least for beginners and for pretty involved projects, is GarageBand. It actually comes free with the Macs, which is amazing. And it's an amazing piece of software. Um, there are higher end software that you can use. Uh, like in, in our agency, we use Pro Tools for some complicated projects. Uh, but for something like this, GarageBand, which is free with a Mac, is amazing. Uh, you don't need a Mac though, you can use a PC. Um, I don't have a PC, but I've looked around and uh, there is PC software out there that's not too expensive. That seems to be the equivalent of GarageBand. Um, I looked up and I found one called Mixcraft 7. Uh, it's 90 bucks, which is not that much. Um, I'm not endorsing that product. I don't know how it is. I haven't used it, but it looked like the feature set was the same as GarageBand. Okay, you've got your computer and you've got your recording software on the computer. Uh, now you'll need a microphone. 
uh, we use an AKG C3000, which is a studio microphone, and it's nice. And it looks like might look like crazy. Uh, it's about 200 bucks, which isn't crazy for a microphone. You can go way more expensive than that. Uh, it's a nice one, but for uh, uh, an indie author that doesn't do this all the time, there are lots of options. In fact, I've included a link below the video in the post. It's a link to an article that has lots of microphone options. Some are like this, some are USB direct, where the USB uh, connection goes directly into the computer, so you don't need an interface like this. Okay, headphones. You're probably gonna wanna monitor yourself at points throughout the recording and listen back. Um, so you'll get yourself a pair of headphones. They can be whatever headphones you have. They don't have to be studio headphones like these. These are AKGs. Um, almost any headphone will work. Okay, one of the most important things will be your space. Okay, it's not important what kind of space it is. You're gonna to wanna to make sure it's relatively quiet. You know, you're not on a big street with his cars going by constantly. Um, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure if it's a big space that, that you've deadened the walls with stuff on the walls or blankets or anything that can absorb some of the sound so you don't get echoes. Uh, we use from the studio these uh, studio baffles. They're like foam. You can use foam like egg crate foams and stuff like that. Uh, whatever you can do to deaden the sound. Okay, you've got your space ready, you've got your microphone, you've got your computer with your recording software ready. Uh, so you're ready to record. So right now I'll take you through the overview of GarageBand and at least the settings and the kinds of things that you'll have to pay attention to regardless of what software you use. Here we are in GarageBand. Uh, as I said, this isn't meant to be a step-by-step -step tutorial, so I'll try to give just an overview of the process. And even if you're not using GarageBand, some of the principles should apply. All right, uh, this is my file for Where the Hell is Tesla? And I'm gonna solo this right here. And let's say I've just recorded this. It's simple, you just, you're gonna be hitting record buttons. GarageBand is very, very straightforward. Then, beep, just like a GPS, it highlights a path. No spoken directions though, maybe there's an app for that. More or less directly for that. More or less directly to Tesla. After a few hours. Okay, that's our audio file. And I'm going to go over just a couple of the settings in here in this file. All right. Uh, first, we'll go down to our master setting. We have a master track. That kind of controls things throughout. Here's your little control button. Okay. So on your output, uh, we're using some compression. And we're using this thing called a limiter. Okay. The limiter limits your peaks to negative 3 dB, which is what the ACX asks for. All right, you're also looking at a noise gate. A noise gate is the low end that ACX is asking not to have sound under. Okay, so they say 60, but I put it down to negative 64. Okay, so you have various settings here. I have a blank GarageBand file that I've saved for you guys. Uh, you can download it at the link in the blog. Uh, now, let's go back up to the... And then in this, you can have individual settings. For example, in this single track, this is chapter 18. Uh, I have my, my EQ settings. These are kind of global, but you can tweak them depending on which chapter. You can also do them in the master if you want. Um, and here, based on your different frequencies, you can pull them. So this adds bass, gives a little bit of that radio sound, pulls out the middles and adds just a little bit of high end. So that's the curve that I like. Okay. And another thing you want, you can do, here's over here is automatic level control, um, where the recording level can be controlled by the software, which if you're not really confident, you can do that. Um, and then this here is important, the noise gate. All right, so set to 64. Okay, when you're ready to hit the record button and start actually speaking into the microphone, here's some things to keep in mind. Keep the mic about six to eight inches from your face. You can play around with this, right? And it'll depend, right? If, if you need to whisper, you can come in a little closer and whisper. And if you need to yell, you can come back and yell or tilt your head to the side and yell. Uh, make sure you're speaking clearly and make as few mistakes as possible. Uh, you'll see later, um, if you're speaking muffled, you might have to actually go back and re-record. Or if you're making a lot of errors, your editing time will increase dramatically. As it is, taking out breaths, extra breaths and stuff will take up a lot of time. Make sure your pace isn't too fast or too slow. That's kind of self-explanatory. 
Uh, you can speed it up though, like action sequences, start talking pretty loud and intensely. Um, you want to minimize your loud breath sounds and lip sounds because that will be a giant pain when you go to edit that, taking out all those things. If you have to, you know, moisten your mouth or whatever, like take a break, you know, step back, get yourself ready and come back in. And that, then that's only one edit that you have to make. Uh, we also have this, this is a P filter, a pop filter. Um, this looks impressive, but it's like 10 bucks. So you should invest in this if you can. Uh, and it really works. It takes out pop, pop, some of that pop. Uh, keep your characters' voices and accents consistent without making them too over the top or cartoony. But keep in mind, this is also like a common sense thing. My novel here is, it's a comedy. So some of my voices have to be a little over the top, but I'm aware of that. Okay, and once you've recorded your voice, uh, you want to go in and actually make the edits. And I'll walk you through some of that right now. All right, so let's say we've recorded some. Here's our little clip that we recorded. Then, beep, just like a GPS, it highlights a path. No spoken directions, though. Maybe there's an app for that. Okay, so right here you can see two instances where I have a breath, right here and right here. Okay, where you can actually hear it. No. All right, so I can take that. Just take it out. So now let's play it back. It highlights a path. Oops, I need a little bit of... It's a path. No spoken directions, though. Maybe there's an app for that. More or less directly to Tesla. And we'll go pull that in. It was a little bit too an much of it. for that. More or less directly to Tesla. After a few... All right, so and some, some breaths don't sound so bad, so like this one. After a few hours, days, weeks, I, I don't know, of walking... The thing beeps again. Stop. Enter the door on your... You can see here the uh, volume level. It's also getting my volume from the mic right now. But as I play it, you'll see the uh, the volume and how it stays in the green. It can kind of hit the yellow. And you can do it by numbers as well. Our professional tester in the doorway just in case. And Pete unlocks it. Psh. Bobo doesn't... Okay. So we're done with... Let's say we're done with chapter 16 for the moment. But I'm going to go up to chapter one. Okay, so we'll go back up to chapter one. And I'm going to export chapter one. You go up to share, export song to disk. Okay, goes into my exports folder. I'm going to call this, where the hell is Tesla? 01. And it looks complicated on the ACX site, but look... Just one button, MP3, and then your quality, 192 kilobits per second. I'm going to choose export cycle area only because I have different lengths here. Uh, I've selected a certain region. Okay, so we have our MP3 file for chapter one. So let's go back to the ACX file, and I'm going to upload chapter one. Okay, I'm going to upload chapter one. Here's chapter one right here. Okay. And that's it. Then you can do your chapter, all well, your chapters, your audio sample, and you are done. Once you've uploaded your files to ACX, after about a week or so, uh, barring any issues with your files, uh, automatically ACX takes care of packaging it up and distributing it through Amazon, through Apple iBooks, and through Audible. Hi, I'm Chip. Before we get started, I have to read you my official disclaimer. The events depicted in the following... It's an awesome thing, and it's great, and you can do it yourself.